Uh, in this video I will talk a bit about the robot I made uh, that can jump. I'm going to talk about why you want one of these robots in Robocraft 2 at least for now until uh, they're no longer viable but right now they are and I'm gonna finish the video on the last part of the video I'm going to talk about like different techniques to make one of these robots and how you can make one yourself if you do not know how. Anyway uh, so why you want to make these ones it's quite simple uh, there's quite a lot of these kind of cliffs on the map and uh, conventional robots that cannot jump cannot make it up here there's no ledges up on most of these hills uh, meaning uh, they can prove quite nice positions so what I made was actually a retractable turret uh, mostly to have the center of weight quite low on the robot while also be able to get a turret quite high so you can stand up on these hills and shoot down at robots below you, kind of having nice sniping positions. Um, either to defend your own tower, like the one we have here, and you can also find uh, quite good positions to attack the enemy towers. Um, so uh, you can position yourself in ways where the enemy will have a real hard time getting to you or destroying your robot, while at the same time being able to shoot at them. That's the, that's the whole premise of these types of robots. Um, so uh, let's get up here, let's see if we can make the jump here, here we go, and here you see one of the enemy's uh, plutonium towers that we need to take down in order to destroy the reactor and win the match. So you can fire safely from here, uh, it will be really hard for a robot that cannot jump to actually reach you here, uh, while you can in uh, peace destroy their tower. Unless, of course, the enemy team got a robot that can also jump. So most of the cliffs here that would provide nice ways to shoot at this robot are not reachable by, by a conventional robot. Even when the shields start spawning, like they should do quite soon. You can actually shoot in between the shields um, if you time your shots correctly. So let's wait here. Uh, it should be like one or two right the inner shields should spawn quite soon. I think I actually mismanaged that shot. Here we go. So now the inner shields uh, spawn. It won't be harder to hit than this, but even now you can kind of time your shots to hit in between in between the shields and still do damage to the turret to the point where it will uh, go down. So let's do that. It won't take much longer than like a minute. Oh, that was that was bad height, right? Oh, there we go. So quite close. So you can take down uh, enemy turrets from quite a lot of safety. Um, you can also hit at, for example, the turrets that defensive turrets that spawn uh, once both of these turrets are down. It's also kind of fun to play with, right? Like instead of just building a pure tank, you have something that is is fast and you can jump. That's, that's kind of cool. So the way this is constructed, uh, or at least the way this robot is constructed is with small hinges, a lot of small hinges below. I have, I have put some flaps on them that will hit the ground quite hard and bump the robot into the air. I have one more trick up the sleeve on this robot. Let's see if I can actually show that one. I just need it to trip over. Uh, let's see if we can do that. There we go. Maybe? No? All right. So anyway, if I fall upside down, which I, uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just trying right now. Uh, let's see if I can uh, like do something stupid here. There we go. Uh, I got this flap that um, I seem to have actually landed on my the robot's ass. <laughs> the only position where I can't flip myself back up. Here we go. Uh, but anyway, if I would end up upside down, this one will flip me back up. And just because I'm making a video, of course, I'm, I'm not able to. But that's the, not like you can do that with robots. It's just that like a normal robot won't really flip upside down that much. Uh, a robot where you constantly jump up and down ledges probably will. Right. Let's see. Come on. Come on. No. All right. I think I won't waste more time. You get the idea of why you want these robots and why they are fun. So let's talk about how you make these ones. First of all, they had to. They will kind of be weak in a conventional battle against a conventional robot because they're very lightweight. You see, it's only the lightest type of material used. You also invest a lot of CPU into the hinges themselves, meaning it will be substantially weaker uh, than if you have something that's properly armored. Um, 
so so they're by no means overpowered um, because any you will be very vulnerable when you try to move between those ledges or if they can actually land a hit from below um, let's check out the construction a bit more close up so you can see here there's a lot of tidy flaps you actually don't need this many that's just a bit I, I kind of ended up not wanting to make it heavier um, and the thing that actually helps to jump height the most is how long they are not how many they are you could do it fine with like four two in each direction just they you need to be like very very like not not that much but just a tiny bit longer maybe uh, so uh, the longer you make them uh, the higher it jumps but of course they're also more vulnerable to 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 getting destroyed right for example if they're short like these you can drive down a hill and they won't hit the ground in front of you if you make them too long they will uh, so the pro of having this construct with with hinges below um, is that you end up with a kind of conventional car with a narrow wheelbase uh, a narrow wheelbase is good because it makes the car turn very good if you have a broad wheelbase it will turn badly um, I'm, we'll get into that later because the other way to jump will actually end up with a rather broad wheelbase with a lot worse handling but there's other pros of that type of build so it's very very simple there's some stuff I've done on this one that you don't need to do um, but you could just connect hinges to the key you want like the jump button or whatever um, and it will work so you set them to max speed and that's it, right? You just have to check that it's moving the correct direction. So you might have to change this if it's moving the wrong direction, but that's it. Uh, I collected some logic to it, mainly because I don't wanna think about how long I hold the jump key. So I've set like a timer. So it's only active for 0 0.3 seconds, regardless like what I do with the keystroke. So I can just tap it lightly and it will be, be correct every time. I also added some logic to, to make them go up a tiny bit before going down to get another little bit of jump height. But that's not something you need to do, it's just that I'm trying to optimize stuff. So let's go and check the other way to, to do this. Um, I have um, a robot that is not done yet, it's more like a prototype. Uh, so this one, I put the engines outside as well here. Um, this is a robot I'm not done with. Uh, mostly because engines will be removed in the upcoming patch, meaning you don't really want to incorporate them in a new build anymore because you will have to adjust old builds and remove them. So you might as well build without them as, as it is. So anyway, what happens here is I'm gonna take this for a spin. Uh, so it works differently. Instead of having small flaps hitting the ground, uh, the wheels uh, hit the ground. And there's like, as I said, pros and cons of that. Um, so let's see here, it seems to be loading rather slow this time. I hope the game actually doesn't crash. It happened a few times during load. Uh, would be typical if it does that while I'm recording, but it seems to work out just fine. So this one will obviously need more weight later. So uh, the pro of actually uh, jumping with your wheels is that, um, that as you will see here, uh, you don't lose any speed at all uh, jumping. Uh, the, the con, actually we saw that right away, is that it seems to be a lot less stable. So you're, it might of course be that this robot is not done yet, but even when I tested putting on weight, and I mean this one is rather perfectly balanced. Um, I should probably just have uh, not went back to the garage, but uh, respawn there instead, that would have been a lot faster. Anyway, I can talk while this loads, sorry about that. I'm not gonna start over the video because of something like this. That will take you too much time. Uh, well, anyway, is that um, it's it's not as stable in the jump. Then I think partly because it's breaking uh, while jumping, having small flaps below actually provide a lot steadier uh, robot that very seldom can flips in any direction. Uh, but anyway, over to the pros of, of this one is that you can make really impressive and long jumps because the robot do not break in, in the jump. Um, so th that, and that's pretty much the only really good thing about this type of robot. Um, because the negative thing is uh, this one is still very very uh, like lightweight despite actually using the military material but it's almost no nothing there yet. It's, it's very bare bones and it still barely make it up the ledge. 
meaning I need a broader wheelbase to jump. So you end up, like, if you're gonna have, like, a substantial jump height on this type of robot, you need a really broad wheelbase, and a really broad wheelbase makes the robot turn really, really bad. Uh, so that's, that's like, a big con if it wasn't just for, for being, like, less, less steady in the jumps, it also ends up having worse characteristics while driving. Um, it's also, like, kind of less protected because you kind of if you want like good nice big connections you kind of end up with uh, let's say a worse constructed robot overall it won't be as as durable uh, or at least it's very hard to to kind of end up with as good of a robot with with this type of technique to make the robot jump but uh, like the, the the possibility of the like max jump height the max jump length or at least mass length is, is a lot greater so I wanted to show this anyway, even though I think it's harder to make a really good robot with this technique, uh, which of course is a nice challenge to try to. So um, I'm gonna finish the video by showing that little logic I made to 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 make this real. We're gonna delete these so they don't clutter up. Uh, so anyway, here is my share. So instead of connecting the jump button directly to um, to the hinges. What I do is I, I connect it to um, to this kind of the logic gate here and to the timer. So what it does is it starts the time when you hit the jump button, it starts the timer and resets it. It's very important to put reset as well. What what will happen is pretty much like you start it, you don't care about the reset, but it means next time when you start it, it's gonna start from zero. Uh, and what it also does is put this little logic gate here to one, will will activate these hinges. I'm gonna go like in, in then why why like why why I did this like it's, it's, it's nice anyway. Uh, I probably said it when showing off the first robot. Anyway, uh, and uh, what it does more is uh, that when it ends, it put this one back to zero. And the current state, which is here, will be connected to all the hinges. So the benefit of this is that I can control exactly how long I, I want the flaps to be open for. That, that's the real benefit. So I don't have to think about like timing how long I hold in, in my case, the space key, space bar. I can just uh, tap it lightly and it will uh, will work every time. And it will. I, I won't either have to worry about holding it too long. So I end up like landing on the flaps. So just tap it lightly every time and it will work. So that's the benefit of having that. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, I think like on the other one, I also connected to a, a second set to have the flap upwards first and then downwards, but that's a bit more complicated. So I won't go through that. So I think that covers it all, like why you want these types of robot and how you can make them. This is super bare bones, so really easy to see how, how I made this one. Um, the, the horizontal uh, share is mostly to keep it really low. It's very easy, only, all, everything you need to do is just remember to have like one of the sides backwards the one otherwise they will spin in the wrong direction